In this video, we're going to start to dig into the fundamentals of logistic regression. And we're specifically going to start with the binary case where you can have a positive or a negative example. It's just a two class problem. We're going to define the binary logistic regression model and then also write out the loss function. We're going to use maximum likelihood estimation to estimate the parameters of the model, which is equivalent to minimizing the negative log likelihood. In this video, we're just going to get an expression for the loss. And then in the next video, we're actually going to optimize that loss by trying to find the minimum of the loss with respect to the parameters. So in general, the idea behind logistic regression is to fit a discriminative model where we want the model to give us the probability of being in a particular class given our input features and um, of course some parameters. Here we're first just going to focus on the binary classification case where we only have two classes, uh, kind of a positive class and a negative class. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to predict the probability of being in the positive class. The probability of being in the negative class will be just be one minus this value. One option would just be to fit a linear model where we have some parameters and we take the dot product of those parameters with our feature vector. And we just use this output to directly fit the probabilities here. The problem with this approach is that if you do this, then the output of the model here will be outside of the range from zero to one, which means that you won't get a valid probability output from your model. As a reminder in normal linear regression, for example, if you're predicting house prices, then the values here can take on values like, I don't know, $10,000 or something, which is definitely not something in the range between zero and one. So the idea is that we're going to force the model output to lie within the zero one range by passing this um, dot product between the weight vector and the feature vector through a sigmoid function. And as a quick reminder, what does the sigmoid function do? If we have some scalar variable A and we're taking the sigmoid of A, then what's going to happen is this is the value one and uh, at a very large negative value for a, it's going to be close to zero, it's going to come up, and then it's going to go to one. That's disgusting, but I think you get the idea. And the value here will be a half. So the idea here is that if we're going to take this dot product, then any value that we put in here, the output of this prediction model is going to be between zero and one. And we're of course going to have to figure out how we're going to set the parameter vector w. In this case, we're going to say that the value that we get out here, we're going to interpret that as the probability of being in our positive class. And that implies that the probability of being in the negative class is just going to be one minus the output from our model. As a quick reminder, as in linear regression, we're kind of using this little hack where we're pretending that the first feature value is equal to one. You'll see later on in some of the subsequent videos that I actually don't always make this assumption in order to understand the model a little bit better, but I'll be clear um, about when we're doing this and when we're not doing this. But you can infer it from the model notation as well. If we don't do this, then we don't have any bias term in here. So let's consider the loss function that we're actually going to use in order to figure out how to set that parameter vector w. We're given a data set with input features x, which will, could be in general, could be a vector, and then the output labels y, which in this case for binary log logistic regression would just be a zero or a one. Let's just make that a little bit concrete by, for example, looking at the iris data set. Here in this example, we've got two features and we can maybe think of the petal length as our first feature. So this could be uh, X1 and the petal width as our second feature X2. And in this case, all we're trying to do is a binary classification task. 
where we're trying to predict whether a flower is a iris virginica, this particular type of iris, or whether it's not an iris virginica. So it's just a binary classification task. Yes, you are an iris virginica, or no, you're some other type of iris. So in this case, the data might look something like this, where the 3.5 here, this is the first feature for the first training item. And this is the second feature for the first training item here. And this is then the label for the first training item. So the first training item is actually not uh, uh, Iris Virginica. This would be the first dimension of the second training item, the second dimension of the second training item. And in this case, this flower is actually a Virginica. So here, the first feature is the petal length. The second feature is the petal width. And the label here is whether this is a virginica or not. So in this case, it is a virginica. And in this last example here, this is not a virginica. Also the first training sample, this is not a Virginica. So what we're going to do is we need to figure out how to set our parameter vector W. And the approach, approach that we're going to use is we're going to use maximum likelihood estimation. So in this case, you're given a data set of N points. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply them all together. We assume the points are IID. And that means that the the likelihood function just is the product of the individual probabilities. So concretely for this example, what you will do is you will multiply the probability of the class of the first training item given the feature vector for the first training item and our parameters. And then you're going to multiply the probability of the class of the second training item given the feature vectors um, and the parameter vector and so on up to, not the third, this should be the nth training item. So for this example here, this y1 will just be zero, and this x1 will be 3.5 and one. This y2 here will be one, and this x2 will be the vector of 6.5 and 2.25, and so on. This value here will be zero, and this vector here will be 5.0 and 1.5. We can write that in a slightly more condensed form as we've done before. So it's the product of all our training items of P of Y N given X N, our feature vector and our parameter vector W. And this, this thing here, that is the likelihood of our parameters W. I like minimizing things, so instead of maximizing the likelihood function, what we can do is we can minimize the negative log likelihood. So we take the negative of the log of the likelihood. In this case, I've just denoted the likelihood with this capital L. We can substitute this equation in here. And the nice thing about that is we've got the log of a product. And that means we can take the log inside and becomes a summation. So we have minus the sum over all our training points of the log of P of Y n given X n and the parameters. Now we've still not actually put in the model, the prediction function in here from the previous slide. And that's what we're going to try and do now. So from the previous slide, you can go and look up and make sure that you, you understand this. The probability of being in a particular class, given the feature vector, it depends on whether the class is the positive class or the negative class. If we're looking at the positive class, then it's just the output of our model, the prediction function. If we're in class zero, then it's just one minus that. And that's because we're doing binary classification. Now we can actually um, substitute in, you know, the sigmoid function here, which is the one we're actually going to use. So this is just substituting that in. The prediction model here is the sigmoid of the dot product between our feature vector, our feature vector and our parameter vector. If the class is positive, if the class is zero, then it's one, one minus the output of the model. 
Now here's a little trick to write this thing in just one expression without any curly braces. You can write this expression in this form. Let's just go through that a little bit carefully. So let's say we're in the positive class, y is equal to 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and something to the power 0 is always 1. So that's just 1, that is 1. So if the class is 0, then this expression just reduces to sigmoid w transpose x, which is exactly what you have here. Now let's say that the class is negative, it's a 0 class. Then here we've got 0, so anything to the power of 0 is just 1, that's just 1. Here we've got 1 minus 0, so that's just 1. So the result when the class is equal to 0 is just 1 minus sigmoid w transpose x, which is exactly what we got here. So this is a shorthand way of writing this. Now to get an expression for the loss function, what we're going to do now is we're just going to substitute this into here. So let's do that. Here I've just briefly repeated the loss function in terms of the probabilities, and here I've written out the probability in terms of our model output. So if we substitute that in, we're going to get negative. We're going to sum over our endpoints, the log of, and now we've got this term for each of our training items. So we're going to have a sigmoid W transpose X n for the nth training output to the power of y n multiplied by 1 minus sigmoid w transpose x n the nth training output to the power of 1 minus y n the nth point we're taking the log of that whole thing now the neat thing here is that the log of a product of two things just reduces to the sum of the logs. So here we've got, we're going to sum n, 1, n, and then we're going to look at this first term. Cool thing is we can take the power out and put that in front. So here we'll have y of n log of sigmoid w transpose x, the nth point. And now we're looking at the second term. And again, we can take the power and stick that before. So we've got 1 minus y of n times the log of 1 minus sigmoid transpo w transpose x n. And all of that is in the summation. Okay, now we've got an expression for our loss function in terms of the actual parameters from our model. In the next video, we're going to look at how we actually choose the best w because remember what we want to do now is basically want to wiggle w in order to fit the data well going to this um, previous slide we want to fiddle with the w's here so that we get high scores for the actual class label given the actual feature vector for the first and the second and the nth training item we're going to wiggle the w and basically try and get the highest likelihood um, based on the parameter vector w or equivalently give, um, getting the lowest negative log likelihood and that's what we'll look at in the next video how we actually optimize w